We've got uh, two gentlemen uh, joining us now. We've got uh, Catch Anonju, who is in Oweri. And then uh, we're also going to uh, toss to uh, Buja. Uh, but let's uh, try out with uh, Catch. Uh, if we do have him ready, he is also in Oweri at the moment. Uh, good morning, and thank you for joining us on the program today. But just give us the, the, your impression of what is going on right now. Uh, in Oweri, especially in the light of all that you had over the weekend. Yeah, thank you for having me. Uh, right now in Oweri, everybody is actually watching and praying that those who are responsible for staging these attacks across the southeast should please stop now that the British government has made that very important decision. We are aware that it was due to the British government's intended decision on Nigeria that we have had this cascade of violence across the Southeast, which I believe were primarily sponsored to paint the IPOB as a terrorist organization. The IPOB intelligently has also stayed away from being part of any terrorism, like you had the Imo State Governor said, no, it's not the IPOB. Like you had the I, former IG said, it is the IPOB. Simply laying that strategy of trying to foment various forms of violence across the Southeast to actually paint them as coming from the IPOB. Now that the British government has made that important decision, I believe we should all stop the violence and then get ready for renegotiating Nigeria. It is inevitable, that's what we're gonna do. And since the British have said that they are giving asylum to all those who disagree with the Nigerian government as presently constituted, the Nigerian government should understand it is not time to stop all fifth columnist violences. The IPOB should also maintain who they are and never ever get into Armstrong so that we can resolve this Nigerian problem on the negotiation table now that we have both the Southwest and other parts of Nigeria, including the Middle Belt and even most people in the far North, angling that we're in a negotiated country that's inclusive of the aspirations of all nationalities, not just the Fulani, as the federal government seems to want to promote. I think they should understand now that that strategy they are pursuing is honestly unsustainable and listen to the British storm assault and start to prepare to renegotiate Nigeria. It appears there's a lot going on behind the scenes that uh, many will understand given how some of these things are playing out. But first, I mean, when the governor did say these are not IPOB members, it's some politicians who are trying to foment trouble. Then the former IGP says it is IPOB. And then this uh, decision from Britain comes through. And then yesterday the army comes up with statements that they kill certain commanders in IPOB. So you then wonder who then is responsible for this? It is the same people that had the capability of instructing a stand down. Because when this crisis started, we were watching and somebody asked me what's going on. I said, no, let's watch. Very soon they will sleep. And then they had the show, you know, where it is, and it lasted for over three hours. And then the army and the police observed the stand down. I told myself, the only people who have the sophistry to instruct that stand down by the army and police as the terrorists operated for over three hours, you know, where it is, are only people within government. When the IG now slipped his, his mistake calling IPOB, I called my people in the UK and in America. They said yes, that the British government is about to make a very, very important decision in regard to Nigeria. And he thinks that is the reason why fifth columnists are trying to play up violence across Nigeria so that they could use that to do arguments. But when they were not able to sway the British government with that staged violence, the British government mentioned the issue of asylum. And I believe what everybody should get ready for is 
get ready to renegotiate Nigeria, British, who actually did this contraption, have finally agreed that it is not working and they are now willing to be middlemen and they will provide uh, uh, asylum for those who disagree with the current government and their ways. And then so that when the time comes for negotiation, they will play a very important part. So I believe, based on this British pronunciation, those fifth colonists who are busy calibrating this cascade of violence across the East, across the country, should stop. It's over. The British understood. People outside understand what's going on. I know and I agree with the Imo State government. It is not the IPOB that are responsible for the violence. The people are simply trying to kill those boys and then try to paint stories. But we have passed that stage. We're no more listening to such things. We want the government to get re ready to renegotiate Nigeria and try living up with evolving power to some other people and not putting power in a tribal union, which, as you've seen right now, is not sustainable. When you say staged violence, just what do you mean, Mr. Nanuju? Staged violence for violence to occur across the East, and nobody has been able to tell us this is who we taste. And then it comes to Owele, and they were able to dance for three and a half hours, and the army or the police didn't react. That means whoever has the sophistry to instruct that stand down is the person that is staging the violence across the East. And this violence has been staged specifically to paint the picture that the IPOB are violent. And they are also smart. They've stayed away from violence so that they do not undermine the judgment of our international partners. So I think I'm very happy for what we are seeing. And I am urging everybody, including those on the part of the government and the fifth columnist who are staging this violence to please stop. The calibration of violence will not get us anywhere. Nobody in the East is that frightened because I believe if the IPO be transmuted into an Nkoto Wesizwe, we would know they've not yet done that. It is the government. Yeah, the different states. Oh, dear. I hope it's not uh, signal. It's not frozen on us, but uh, we'll just try that. Um, if, because I mean, they've come up with, uh, the Southeast governors met and come up with, came up with a security outfit, which is expected to at least uh, put a stop, stem this tide. We have also seen different regions coming up with their own approach to ensure that these things don't go on. Why do you think that these agencies or these security outfits are not able to stem the tide? Uh, it is simply because, yes, there have been public declaration of intention by the governors in the southwest and also in the southeast. But these governors do not control security per se. Security is in the center, in the hands of the federal government. And we have suspicions that the federal government is in bed with those who are responsible for the insecurity. That's why you cannot stop. So when you see the Fulani commit acts of violence against Nigerians, you go to complain, and then the federal government gives instruction that they should not be touched. They are bandits. They are not terrorists. And what do you expect? You have seen the issue of Pantami. Panta me is a metaphor for where we are right now. Those people who have been propagating fundamentalist violent strategies are now inside the inner recesses of government in Nigeria. That is the metaphor that Panta me brings. And as far as I'm concerned, uh, we have seen it. Nobody's going to tell us anything new. And we have drawn our own conclusions. The federal government, by harboring Panta me, harbors violence. We are now begging the federal government. Please respect the voice of the British and stop those people who are staging this violence across the country. Stop them. And wherever you please, instruct the army and the police to please react whenever those people bring violence anywhere, like they did in Nowhere for three hours and they didn't react. Please tell the police and army to react to save the people. Well, it one wonders the thinking of uh, security agencies uh, on all of these matters. But uh, we also do have a former security uh, operative uh, who is in Abuja. Mark, where? 
Well, thank you, Chamberlain. We have with us Mr. James Van der Fan, who is a former Chief Superintendent of Police. Mr. Van der Fan, you're welcome to Sunrise City this morning. Thank you, Marwa. Pretty grievous um, uh, allegations uh, being given there by Mr. Katch Ononuju. Um, he talks about fifth columnists. Perhaps within, I, I, I yet to get that very clearly, but he seems to suggest that they are fifth columnists within the security organizations and they are the ones perpetrating the violence that we have seen uh, in the Southeast. And that's the reason why it would seem that it is out of control. I don't know, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I totally disagree with that because if you look at the institutional arrangement in the country today, the only sector that is working very well is the security sector of this country, followed by the educational sector. There's nothing like the fifth uh, columnists within the security agencies that can perpetrate trouble. What are they going to gain? Uh, when the chiefs are down, these are the same people that you are calling to go at the war front or go to the, where the insurgents are to make sure that you suppress whatever is there so that citizenry can be able to walk freely on the streets and then sleep well. If you look at what happens in the southeast today, and all those who have been arrested uh, the past weeks and those who were attacking the same institutions that is talking about the fifth columnist are those who are civilians. And uh, from the arrest and preliminary investigations that have been conducted, they are all linked to IPOP. There's no two ways about that. The issue in Nigeria is that uh, it is so strange that in each region, leaders choose to now speak to support those who are perpetrating violence instead of giving credit to security agencies who are putting their lives on the lines every day to make sure that there's a kind of uh, stability and uh, freedom to move about and do whatever you feel you can do. Uh, when you are giving this kind of support to these boys, you are increasing their confidence and their wisdom to do most of these things because once they're arrested, the same elders will come back to make sure that they suppress whatever is supposed to be done. And that is why you see these attacks are perpetrated and are ongoing in all the regions that you can see. If you go to Benue State today, it's the same story, that uh, you have a lot of attacks and that is where uh, if you have a leader like the former the governor of Benue State, you discover that we would have not been where we are today. When leaders choose to protect those who are perpetrating crime, and then you call names or the fifth columnists, for me it is not the best, because you are rather making the agencies to now have a lower morale, making sure they confront most of these things. Uh, most people who say these things have never been faced with a gun pointed at them. And you then... know, but, but there are huge questions in, in, on almost every corner. Yes. So, for instance, he made reference to the fact that, you know, uh, some security agencies were told to stand down. There have been questions as to what... How can the attacks that were perpetrated in Imo, where, uh, you know, a, a correctional facility was attacked in the way that it was attacked, uh, the headquarters of the police uh, yeah. of the police was also attacked in Emo. You know, there have been questions as to whether or not there was no intelligence before that time, uh, whether or not, you know, people did not see people coming en masse uh, to such an area and alert people at the headquarters. Big questions around what is going on. But then the politicians came up and said, no, it is not IPOP, it is politicians who are perpetrating this. But they told us that 50 people have been arrested. I'll, you know, ask you what your thoughts are so you can help us make sense of all of this when we come back from this break. Right. Please stay with us. Well, Mr. James Van der Fan is still with us here in our studios as a former chief superintendent of police. Just before we went on break, you said you didn't agree with Mr. Onanuji's statements uh, that the people who have been arrested so far have been linked with IPOB. However, we also heard the governor come out to say uh, that the people who are committing, who are perpetrating the uh, crime or who perpetrated the crime were politicians. He still reiterated it uh, just on Friday uh, when he came to see the president while addressing state house correspondents, uh, saying that politicians are behind this. And he said it with so much authority that people were sure that he knew the people or knows their names, because uh, he also said he doesn't know why the security agencies are reluctant uh, to release the names of these people who are committing these crimes. I mean, on Saturday, we now saw an attack on his own home, uh, on his country home, on his personal property as well. 
I don't know. Is it possible that the people he's defending would also descend on him? What, what, what precisely is the issue here? Well, uh, the governor of Imo State is the chief secretary officer of Imo State. He has intelligence at his disposal, more than what we have in the studio here. And if he's claiming that it's the politicians that are perpetrating these attacks in Imo, I expect him to turn over that list on that day to the president or hand it over to the Inspector General of Police. But unfortunately, these are all stories that most of these governors will say somewhere and allow people to believe that these things are done by their openness or some other Well, he persons. said that in the villa. Yes, he said that in the villa when he was talking to the press, not to the president, because that was a closed-door meeting. He didn't speak to the press before the president. He spoke to the press after he met the president. And when you see a very serious issues of this nature happening in your state as a chief secretary officer, I expect him to go and do a petition and report to either the commissioner of police in his own state or give it to the Inspector general of police to now perpetrate, to make sure that this boy arrested. So far, the police, the military have been there and a lot of arrests have been made. If you look at what happened four days ago, they went into where these guys were hiding and they arrested them and killed some of them. And it was identified that those who lead that operation that resulted into the attack on the correctional center and then the police headquarters in a way, was one of those uh, leaders that was killed in that operation, and a lot of arms were recovered. These were not politicians, these were miscreants. If we are making this kind of statement because you have political issues in your state and you want to abandon the real issues on ground and then face your openness, I think we will not get it right. This happens in Borono when the aiders came to tell the whole world that they don't want military to come into uh, when Boko Haram initially came into Borono State. And today, the same thing is happening in the southeast, and then we're still playing politics with it. It is going to consume people within that region, not people outside that region. Because once you are unable to say the truth about what security is in your place, to give correct analysis of how security agencies can be supported in making sure they time these things, it's not going to help any other person in that area. So you think that the governors are not being honest about what is going oh, on? Oh, yes, they are not being honest. If you look at what the Canada State governor is doing today, he has come out strongly to condemn most of these things, and he has directed that nobody should be involved in negotiating for ransom. Because if you don't have this position of uh, authority of giving directives to what you want your state to be governed, this is the kind of things we keep getting there on a daily basis. It happens in Benway, the governor supported the military to make sure they go in there to make sure they arrest those who kill the army. Tomorrow, I don't think somebody can be able to do that in that part of the state again. And then if you see what is happening in some other states, the political leaders will come together so and you, tell you, you... you just gave... All the states have their own peculiar challenges. Yes. In Benue State, you just gave... A, I don't know the example you're talking about now, where you talked about... There was a situation where were soldiers killed. were killed. Yes. And uh, the governor didn't come out and say they were killed by politicians. He said they were killed by the militants who were operating within that franc. And uh, the, the army went in and they did a thorough job. Unfortunately, yes, some people die, but that's the consequence of doing this kind of thing within your locality. If you are able to understand the implication of taking the lives of those who are coming to protect you, I don't think we should be where we are today. But security agencies have been seen to be people who are rather opposing the use in trying to cause mayhem on their own people. And when they go in there, the same governors will come out and say that, yes, we are killing innocent people. Well, I remember that the governor of Benue State did come out to, you know, also say that he had given up the local government or the deputy local government area uh, of where that, of where the incident the occurred. The deputy local government chairman. Yes, chairman. Yes. Uh, yes. where the incident occurred, where the soldiers were killed. And, and there were questions as to why the governor has to come up to say that he has been given up. I mean, if somebody has committed a crime, should it be natural that, you know, he should be arrested? That is what the governor was saying, that he has allowed the, the, the security agencies to pick up the man. Because he was inducted. He in didn't need the, the governor's allowance, is the question. No, he, he doesn't need the governor's uh, permission, but that is an appointee of government, and the governor is his own supervisor. So, in most cases, when you're arresting that kind of a person, you're supposed to inform the governor, or the governor should be aware. And it is when governors are aware of what you are doing that they can really know you are supporting the sanity within their state. And that's just what the governor did in that kind of uh, instance. But if it is elsewhere, the governor of a state will tell you that my deputy chairman is not involved in this kind of thing, so he shouldn't be touched. And it will go silent. Because you, you don't have the monopoly just going to certain places and make arrests. Just as the governor of Imo State is telling you that politicians are perpetrating this kind of uh, mayhem in the state. But he has been unable to mention one single name. If you have credible intelligence that these are the men who are doing it, then why not turn them over so that they can be arrested and prosecuted? Mm. Because it, 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 it seems that even the governors themselves are afraid of certain people within their domain that they shouldn't be touched. So rather than speak openly, they speak in a closed vacuum where you can not really attach particular names to anything they're saying. 
So for me, these are just a political statement that they are making when they really don't have any credible thing to say. In Kaduna, the situation is a bit different. So the governor has also said that um, the governor has said that there shall be no negotiations yeah. with with uh, kidnappers. Yes. Uh, but that has come with consequences. Because uh, on Friday night, we were greeted with the very sad news uh, that three of the students who were taken from Greenfield University mm. were killed. Yeah. Uh, it was a very heart-rending moment for a lot of people who heard, who heard that story. It's uh, true. But the question will be, what has the capacity been uh, to rescue the people who have not been able to negotiate? Because we know that before that time, students were taken from uh, the forestry institution in yeah. Africa. And we know that of that number, only about 10 of them have been freed so far. We understand that their parents negotiated and were able to get them back. A number of them, a substantial number of those students are still with the kidnappers. They yes. have not been freed. Uh, the same thing with the Greenfield uh, students. They sent, they killed three of them to send home a message and now, you know, at least another 30, from what you understand, are still with the kidnappers. Do we really have the capacity? Because we, we don't seem to have shown that we, have, we are able to free these people without the use of, uh, without the payment of ransom. Well, we, we have the capacity to rescue most of these kidnapped uh, people. Unfortunately, uh, it is a sad moment for uh, the people of Kaduna State and the parents of the three students that were murdered by the kidnappers. But one thing you must know about kidnapping is that it is either you kidnap for ransom or for political reasons or for whatever other reason that you are tied to it. And what we are having today is purely for financial gains, and that is why they kidnap. And if you continue paying, you are inducing them. It is a hard decision to take that you don't want to pay ransom for people to be released. But the next thing would have been Kadar State Government will support the agencies within these areas to make sure that they have not embarked on what is called electronic intelligence and then surveillance. So that you should be able to know from what you are monitoring where these people are, how many of them could be likely be there, and then the number of men that you can move into these kind of areas to do these kind of operations. But where you don't have this uh, electronic intelligence that you can deploy, and you release solely on human intelligence, you will discover that if you are moving in to do this kind of rescue, you are going into a bobby trap. And the most, unfortunately, if you are not careful, you will end up killing me those who are going to rescue. And that is why here politicians talk about the insecurity, but they don't do anything to make sure they argument what we have to now improve on the arsenals that we have. It is not just about talking about it, but it's about also taking steps to make sure you do particular things at the right time. This is the modern way of warfare. It is not all this kind of uh, shoot and run that we used to do in the uh, ancient days. We have to look at digital uh, uh, monitoring of people now. We should be looking at how we can deploy drones to make sure they take a look at these things. And then the Air Force is supposed to come in because every fighter jet has about 15 cameras attached to it. And these cameras and videos are supposed to now give you precise movement of the people that you are going to monitor. But I don't know how Air Force have been unable to make sure they supply most of this uh, intelligence. So back to what you were asking, whether the intelligence is not working. Yes, it's not working because it is most obvious that the intelligence collaboration in conducting and combating this is not working very well. If it is working, I don't think the insurgents will be having people 3,300 in one place and they cannot move in to rescue them. The, capa so is me, the question is around capacity. But we have the capacity that's because the we have the human, uh, the human capacity. We have the weapons that you can move in, but you can't move with particular kind of weapons because you want to rescue particular people. Because if you said you are going in with uh, rocket launchers, you discover that one explosion there can kill a lot of people. So you need a lot of planning that you are sure of where you are going to the route you will follow, and then the kind of the number of men you are going to to, to combat. So we have the capacity, but what is needed now is the wisdom on the part of the government to support the military and the police to make sure that they have what it takes to move in fully and do most of these rescue operations. Let's listen to this track uh, of Governor Samuel Otom on the security situation in his state. The action and inaction of government is clearly demonstrating that they have adopted what these people are doing. As far as I'm concerned, Boko Haram Fulani Hillsmen, mm -hmm. Israel, ISIS, all of them are working towards the same goal in Nigeria. Let nobody deceive me. Mm -hmm. So that is it. And as long as Nigerians do not take this serious, they started as Hillsmen. 
Then now they are called one a bandit. Mm. But why are they not being declared terrorists? Despite all our previous pleading and appeals and begging that this rule should be prescribed, just like it was done to uh, iPod mm -hmm. and uh, iPod and Biafra. What is the difference? Yeah. Yeah. What, what, what have those people done? Have they killed the number of people that this probably has been killing? No. They came in the name of they want to rear their cattle. So they want their cattle to eat grass here and drink water. Now that we have a law that make a provision for ranching, they prohibit open grazing. They now keep their cattle in neighboring states and come here and kill our people without cattle and go back. By the grace of God, God will protect us from this evil men that have come to destroy Nigeria. But the federal government knows them. So the federal government should stop them. Important statement he made there. Um, I, don't, I don't know which one was the most important one <laughs> to you, but I mean, as a journalist, is when he says, you know, Boko Haram and Herdsmen and all of those people, they are working for Nigeria. Otherwise, he's wondering why they haven't been declared terrorists. Yes, he, he said they are working together. And if they are working together, they are having the same support from the political elite that he expects people to speak out, and people are not speaking out. Now, when you look at, you do analysis of what they are saying, it's the same thing we are saying here. Now, if politicians can come out clearly to denounce this kind of things happening in their states, you will not say this. In the whole northern part of the country today, when you look at a state like Jigawa, Jigawa has been very restive, very peaceful, in spite of all the things that we have been seeing. Have you wondered why Jigawa has not been a victim of Boko Haram's series of attacks? It is because at the inception of Boko Haram, they had meetings with most of the political leaders that they wanted to introduce their Sharia Caliphate kind of a system in the entire state. And the then governor, when this thing happened, he said no, they were not interested in any other system than what they have. And that's why today, Jigawa is the most peaceful state in the whole northern part of the country. Nobody is asking why this has been sustained. But it's because the leadership, the, the chiefs, the emirs there, agreed that they don't want anything that can disturb the peace of the state. And that is why they are where they are today. But all other states that were sleeping are engulfed by this uh, kind of thing. When the governor of Belize started talking about the ranching of, uh, uh, and then restriction of movement of cattle, it was seen as very punitive. But today, the same governors who are opposing have come back to agree that ranching is the best thing. Because in this generation, you can't tell me that the nutritional value of a cow that has strayed from Kano to Benue is of the same quality with the one that has been ranched in Benue. It can't be comparable. And if you are looking at the economic benefits of the, 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 the byproducts of the animals you are going to get, like the meat, those in the ranching are going to be more headier than the ones that you are traversing with them inside the bush. So for me, I think even by mere saying they want to ranch it, you have not seen any other governor coming out strongly to say this is how we are going to do and this is the way we are going to start it. So it is just a mere pronouncement and politics with security of people. Because they live in government houses, they don't know how farmers are going to go through this, they don't know how it takes to lose uh, someone so close to you. You go into a house and they discover that they, they slaughter four, five, six members of the family, they wipe it out together. And then someone stays in government house and tells them, okay, politically we have agreed to do ranching. But no governor has taken steps to do that. Mm. So until we are able to look at human lives as more important than superior, and then we, we take decisive actions as leaders of the states, we will continue to be going through this and one day none of us will go any other place. As today we are caged in Abuja that you can't go to Canaba Road unless by train. Let's quickly flip this back to Lagos uh, for Mr. Anonuju's comments. Gentlemen. Oh well, yes, Mr. Anonuju, I mean, you, you heard a lot about uh, what he said. Uh, what immediately comes to your mind in terms of, uh, uh, especially when you hear him say, look, some of these governors are not being forthright about what really the problem is in their states. Yes, I agree that is true. 
a lot of the governors are afraid of speaking up. You can see, like in the far north, the governors were goaded by Abuja to start to renegotiate with, with terrorists. Governors will be there, terrorists will carry guns. Why? Because the same gang in Abuja seem to support those terrorists who are making trouble across. And that was why they booted them to go and negotiate. It's not that Zamfara has peace, no. Today, the House has still have their Yansakai vigilante in Zampara, as they do have in Kasina and in Sokoto. Uh, so he should understand. The problem is those who are priming and calibrating the violence across Nigeria actually do have the support of Abuja. And that's why if Abuja don't say do this, you won't do nothing. There is nowhere you have peace. There is no peace in, 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 the, in Zampara. I went to Maru. I went to Kwatanakwashi. I also came from Anka the other day. It is not peaceful. Don't paint that picture. The difference right now from before is that the violence has now gone around the whole country and has better very well in southern Nigeria as it was then in the north. We have seen that the reasons why nobody is trying to talk is because the governors also can understand what we understand, that for the people to be able to do this and nobody touches them, that means they really must have some kind of sophistry that is only possible from the very highest echelon of governance in Nigeria. That's why the governors are very afraid to speak. But I'm a citizen. I'm not a governor. So I will say the truth that I know. I came to Imo and I saw that all this cascade of violence across eastern Nigeria, nowhere did the government do anything to try to protect the people. And what did I say? That's why I begged them. Please stop this problem. If you were trying to paint the IPOB as a violent organization, well, that has failed. The British government has now gone forward to set that asylum to say, we will give asylum to all who oppose you. We agree Nigeria should sit down and reorganize their country in a way that's inclusive to the aspirations of all. What President Buhari is doing, keeping Pantani, Pantani being a terrorist mastermind and you being comfortable with that is not sustainable. Please, we are the terrorists who are right there at the top of governance. Let them go away and let us have peace. Nobody can pocket Nigeria because our diversity and the numbers we have, those who make this problem don't have numbers to sustain what they're doing. And that's why I think what they're doing is just nonsense. They should stop the terrorism and let us sit down and renegotiate our country in a very peaceful and inclusive manner. The governors well, are afraid, yes, because they know that the perpetration of this violence comes from a place where they dare not argue with. That's why they're afraid. Well, the, the, the governments that definitely uh, will, I mean, they put up a statement last time out saying he's not a terrorist mastermind. And those sentiments expressed at that time, he has since renounced it and that they thought that uh, they should let sleeping dogs lie. That's on the one hand. But speaking about governors, uh, we, we know that uh, people are looking for leadership. We've seen several individuals, as a matter of fact, maybe few uh, they've come up in different regions in the south and people took to them because they were looking for leadership now we've just heard the governor of benway state give his opinion which he has been doing for a while now what is wrong with the governors coming together and saying well look this problem we are the ones who the people have elected we're feeling the heat in our states and then they put their foot down saying this is what we think should happen since we were elected to protect lives and property. If they do that, what would be wrong with it? You cannot accuse them of not doing that. The governors are doing that. You can see the behavior of Governor Tom. You can see the behavior of the Southeast no, governors. No, no, not individually. The Southwest governor. That shows you the governors truly want to save their people. That the Southeast governors have now mimicked the Southwest governors that tells you governors want to save their people. But of course, they are afraid. They do not 
control the security apparatus. They do not have exclusive preserve on violence. It is the federal government that owns that exclusive preserve on violence. And that's why we are all suspicious that why is the federal government allowing this crisis to sustain? I, myself, blame the federal government. Only the federal government could have instructed the stand down in the way for the violence to go on for three hours. No oppression, no reaction from the army, no reaction from the police. And I tell myself, the only organization with that quality of sophistry to command and get and instruct a stand down from the police and army for three hours is the federal government. All right, Mr. Nonju. The government has gone on to take this decision about asylum. I believe the violence should stop and let them understand nobody can subjugate Nigeria. All right. We can sit we... down and then renegotiate. We do thank you very much indeed for your perspectives there. Malkwe? Oh, yes. Um, Mr. James is still here with us. I'm, I'm just wondering, do you guys definitely, I mean, so beg your pardon, you gentlemen definitely uh, have points of agreement um, in, in this entire discussion, and which is about politics, even mm. though you might not agree with the type of politics that is being played, uh, because these are lives of people that we are talking about here. But let me quickly ask you, what do you think is the way forward? Well, the, the, the way forward is just as uh, he said, for the governors to come together. Uh, Chaplin suggested it. If governors can come together, mm -hmm. they have a very strong meeting. Uh, I think it's the, the strongest court that you have in the country today, the governor's forum. If all of them make a statement uh, regarding this uh, issue of insecurity and the roadmap they want it taken, I think it will be able to be solved. Because just as he's saying, the body language of the presidency is not too strong to allow certain operations to continue. And uh, you where, agree with him on that? Yes, I do agree with him on that. Because where the presidency keeps talking about certain things and then leaving the real issues to be addressed, then you discover that it becomes difficult for even some state governors to act because the commanders posted to you are not under your control. They are under the control of someone who is calling the shots in Abuja here. That person is posted by the president. So if you have a field commander in your state that cannot take instructions from you, even when killings are going on behind your door, there's nothing you can do as a governor. And that is why they are resorting to self-help today of having their original securities. But for me, that is also a time bomb. So the only way forward we can have is to have a holistic voice that can be devoid of nepotism, where we can all agree that we have an issue on ground that if we don't do it well, we are going to be like Somalia very soon. Since 1982, Somalia has never had a stable government. And this is the way it started. And today we are looking at these things as something that is affecting particular states based on tribal sentiments. If we don't contain it, it will get to a point where none of us will be safe. So the most important thing is for political leaders to come out and strongly and agree that they need to talk to the president. And then this idea where the chief press secretary to the president is the one addressing the nation on very serious issues of security should stop. It should be a thing where the vice president, even if the president cannot speak now, the vice president can come out to address the nation on most of these issues instead of always seeing God Bashehu and uh, Sani speaking to the people on very serious national issues of this nature. And they were making reference to the presidency. People don't take you serious when uh, such statements are coming from the press secretary where these statements are not written and signed by the president. So for me, we need a leader that can come out strongly now and condemn most of these killings and give directions. And there was a day when the president came back from his uh, medical trip. What did he say? That the terrorists are taking this thing, they are locked too far, if I quote him correctly. Now, it, and they shouldn't undermine that we don't have the capacity to now react and uh, eliminate this thing. You don't need to be warning them. The most important thing is to give direct instructions to all the commanders to make sure that they take the battle to the forest where these people are. It shouldn't be a thing of saying they're taking their lock too far. So for me, such statements are the body language that people are referring to that they are supporting most of these things that are going in the country. So we need a united front, all political leaders to make sure that the right thing is said and then the right thing is done and then the right orders are given to the commanders to make sure these things are done the way it should be done. If not, we are not giving credit to what our own security agencies can achieve and can afford. It's a fine place to leave it. Thank you so much for coming on Sunrise Daily this morning, Mr. Van de Fan. It's a pleasure, Mark. Thank you. Well, Mr. James Van de Fan is a former chief... C Chief Superintendent of Police. Uh, that will be it for this segment of Sunrise Daily. We'll be back shortly. Please stay with us.